So I thought it'd be interesting to take you guys through my settings within Pine Grove and kind of why I did that. Let's quickly go through it. I can't imagine spending too long on this, this sucker. So as I said in my last 101 video, I moved my DOM tree down here and that, and other than kind of hiding some of my panels, which I'm not using, that's kind of my interface that I that I stick with. I don't tend to do a side-by-side -side split because the, obviously the more uh, pages you're rendering, the, the kind of heavy, more heavy duty is on your computer, but it tends to perform okay, but I don't have the side-by-side -side thing of mobile um, and desktop view. If you go to support and settings, let's just run through these. Actually, I've just taken my glasses off. Let's please pop these back on. So I leave that default 20. I mean, 20 seems kind of excessive, um, kind of going back through it. You'd be tempted to maybe drop that down to 10, but I mean, at the end of the day, these, these files take up very, very little space. So um, 20 is just fine. Um, show place holders on empty elements. So when you create a new um, div here, if I cancel that and drag a section in here, you can actually see it in the window and it kind of gives it that height sort of thing. Um, I leave that on because that's kind of handy, but you don't see that obviously when you're in when you're in the uh, browser. It's just it's just within Pine Grove. Uh, enable JavaScript. I mean that's something you can do at the top here. So I'm not that fussed on enabling JavaScript. Um, remembering collapsed and hidden elements. I have that turned off. Auto format HTML code now. I have issues sometimes with um, HTML formatting within Pine Grow. I'll, I'll push up some changes to Git and there'll be some really pointless changes that were made like collapsing of HTML. I have notified them about their formatting and others have noticed it as well but I do keep it on just in just because the majority of the time it does keep it quite nice so but you can turn that off if you are having issues particularly if you're using um, Visual Studio Code alongside it and doing coding outside of Pine Grow, you might want to turn that off. CSS formatting, I leave that default. I leave all these the, the same default settings. I obviously have my theme in dark. I mean, ooh, I haven't seen these actually. Let's have a little look at them. Oh, this is the code editor. Let's just change it now. I'm not really... Yeah, but you can change that if you'd like. Um, show autocomplete. I don't actually use show autocomplete, but it's there if I if I need it. Custom code, blah blah blah. Or two spaces in the indentation is kind of what I like, just because you can get more on the screen. Show render um, indent guys. I have that turned off. Use Emmet. This is one I mentioned in the past. I love Emmet. Just as an example, if I put create a UL, and within that I create an LI, I create five links uh, list items and then within that I have a link and then within that I have an image tag boom and then it all creates it for me you can add classes for things as well um, and really handy quick way to to write code if you can learn to do that so I of course have that turned off I think it's turned off by default so you might want to have that turned on um, Auto reload files when changed outside of Pine Grow. This is again if you're using Visual Studio. Yes, I want to um, reload them. I can't imagine why you wouldn't want to reload them because then you'll have competing files fighting against each other. Under the hood, Pine Grow is just writing to those files. So you, you would want that to be kept up to date. CMS mode is something I'll probably go over in another video. And then miscellaneous settings, ignoring uh, node modules. Um, disable collecting user statistics. I don't mind them collecting my user statistics six you might you might feel uncomfortable about that or whatever so you can disable it there uh, obviously I want to show informational quick messages uh, user variables these can be used obviously for WordPress when you're creating a WordPress template and stuff like that so these are quite handy to have removing empty CSS rules is kind of handy if you can accidentally create a bunch of CSS rules and then they get added to the CSS file just not doing anything so obviously I want them to um, add CSS, uh, remove empty CSS rules. Now use, use CSS auto prefix here is really handy and I've, I've spoken about this in the past that if you use SAS files um, in your project which I strongly recommend I'm going to be doing a video on how you might want to structure your SAS files um, using a, a system called ITCSS 
then what auto prefixer does is obviously prefixes CSS properties that aren't you know that need to be um, auto pre uh, that need to be prefixed for certain browsers and things like that. So it's kind of like free functionality that um, I I tend to just leave on. And then obviously you can have some of these settings that you can define which are the latest kind of browsers or, or which browsers you want to support that use auto prefixer. So that was just a quick look at my settings within Pi and Grow. You might want to copy them, you might not want to copy them, but we've gone through them and now you might know a little bit more about what all the different settings do. So, and until next time, do join me on the uh, on my free Discord because we can you can chat and ask, ask a bunch of questions to be there. And I'm just trying to think of anything else that we uh, that might be of interest to you. Oh, um, a group of flamingos is called a flamboyance.